teacher question. I noticed that you have a lot of post-its in your book. Um, Here, yeah. So what are some things that you write on your post-its? Um, because well, we teach the kids to all write on, on post-its. Do you? Well. Yes. That's great. So um, for me, these are some post-its with writing on them. Um, I, I'm writing ideas. I'm writing down things that excite me. I'm writing down cool details. Uh, I, I write in my books all the time. Totally. That's a great thing to teach them. Yes, sir? Who inspired you to write books? Well, directly who inspired me to write books with those, with those kids. The thing is, um, let me tell you a little story. When I was in seventh grade, a few years older than you guys, I had an author come to my school. Um, I don't remember anything that the author said. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Except for one thing. Somebody asked the author, how do you know if you're a writer? My ears perked up. I was curious. I did not think I was going to be a writer when I grew up. I was pretty sure I was going to be a professional basketball player. <laughs> Didn't work out. I don't know why. Um, but I listened, and the author thought about it for a minute. She said, how do you know if you're a writer? And she said, writers write. <laughs> and I was like, duh. Right? That's, that's the definition, right? But then I thought about it. I was like, maybe she's got a point. Writers write. OK, well, do I write? Well, I write in school when my teachers tell me to. When I write for homework, when I remember to do my homework. But do I write on my own for fun? The answer was no. I never did. And so right then and there, I decided that I must not be a writer. I was not a writer. She made it very clear, right? Like, writers write. I do not write. Therefore, I'm not a writer, right? If I want to test you, get that question right, right? So I was, I was sure I was not a writer. The next 10 years, every time I got an idea for a story, I was like, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't, I would write a paragraph or two, but I would always quit. I'd be like, what am I doing? I know I'm not a writer. The thing is, I think that that author was wrong. Here's why. This is what my life was like when I was a kid. You guys know um, G.I. Joe's action figures, like masks and guns and that kind of stuff, right? If you don't know what they are, they're like, you know, Barbies? They're like mini Barbies for boys with guns, okay? <laughs> so I, I used to play with these G.I. Joe's all the time. And I would take one in each hand. It always went the same way. And one was usually the cool kid from school. And the other one was me. Not the coolest kid. And the cool kid would say something mean and funny to me. And all the other G.I. Joes would laugh. And then I would say something awesome and hilarious back to the cool kid. And all the other G.I. Joes would go, oh! Because I had this guy. And I would get really good at myself, right? It was a good comeback. Now, it's not always easy to think of a good comeback to the cool kid. So sometimes he would say something mean and funny to me, and then I would just beat him up. Like, <laughs> which was just a satisfaction. So I used to do this for like hours and hours every day. The other thing I used to like to do as a kid was I had a, um, I had a basketball hoop on my driveway. I grew up in Baltimore. And it was a really awesome basketball hoop because it could go up to 10 feet or down to 6 feet. And then I really wanted to get good at basketball. I should have left it up at 10 feet and just, you know, practiced my jump shot, practiced my form all day long. But I thought it was much more fun to pretend to be good at basketball. So I put it down to 6 feet. And I would be like, dong, can't shoot the pointers, and fadeaways. And the whole time I would talk to myself and tell myself these stories about me making the NBA, what team I would be on, winning the championship. Hours and hours a day I would do this. But eventually things changed. Because when I was 15 years old, I went away for the summer. And when I came back, I went and took out my G.I. Joes, and I didn't find any G.I. Joes. I found a box of heads and arms and legs of G.I. Joes. And I was like, what happened? What happened to my G.I. Joes? What happened to my G.I. Joes, it turned out, was that my little brother had taken my G.I. Joes and a hammer and had smashed every single one of them. He made like a line and just went, destroyed them. Uh, sometimes people are like, why? Why Why would he do that? And the answer is that he is a sick kid. That's why. Uh, I love my brother very much. We're very close, but he has problems. So, anyway, he destroyed my JJ's. They were wrong. I moved here to New York City and I didn't have a, a basketball hoop in my driveway anymore. So my JJ's were destroyed. My basketball hoop was gone. So what did I do? Well, I became a teacher. I started telling stories to kids. And eventually, I started coming home and telling the stories out loud and typing them. So I tell them out loud, just like I had to the kids, and I would write them down like this. And one day I was sitting at home, telling the story out loud, and going like this, 
And I suddenly realized that telling a story out loud going like this was just about exactly the same thing as telling a story out loud and going like this with G.I. Joe's. <laughs> or telling a story out loud and going like this on a six-foot basketball court. And I suddenly realized that I have been a writer every day of my life. Every day of my life, I had spent two or three hours a day writing. I never wrote any of it down, ever. But it was exactly the same thing. So if you ever find yourself doing things like playing, or talking to yourself on the basketball court, or staring out the window during math class, making up stories, that's being a writer. You can write it down now, you can write it down later, it's the same thing. Next question. Yes, sir. How come in the book you kind of spoil it a little bit? I tell you like what's going to happen, or like if that's something is going to be okay in the end. Yeah. Like like when? Give me an example. Like when you said someone in the book that the hands on Grant's head's going to be cut off. Ah yes, I wanted to warn you about that before it happened because sometimes um, little kids will pick up a book and it'll start with Once Upon a Time and it'll sound like a fairy tale and they'll be like this is great and then they'll get to the part where the main characters get their heads cut off and then they freak out and they go to their parents and their parents freak out and then I get sued and I didn't want to get sued. <laughs> Mostly that was so I didn't get sued. <laughs> Next question. Yes. Um, how come when your parents, when he meets up with Hansel yeah. later in the book, mm -hmm. how come he dies? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I, said, I kind of wanted that to happen emotionally. I wanted you to have that sort of sad but kind of sweet moment between them before the end. You'll find if you read, when you're reading books, in a lot of adventure stories, there is an old man who helps the hero out. It can be Yoda, it can be Dumbledore, um, it can be Abbott and Mortimer if you've ever read the Redwall books. In a lot of adventure books, there's an old man who helps the young hero or heroes out. And often, not always, but often before the end, that old man has to die or go away. Gandalf. Because you want the hero to have to do it on his own, without the help from the wise old person. You want the hero to have to grow up enough to do it on their own. So I was sort of using that feeling in the book. It's a really good question. Next question. Yes, sir. Yeah, so she was kind of cursed, so that she, all of her husbands always died, or something a fate worse than, yeah. I don't know. It's just part of like the back history of the story, but I don't know that part. That would be something for like you guys to make up if you wanted to write like a prehistory, where you like figured out like how she became cursed, or like faithful Johannes, what he did before the start of the story. That would be a good thing for you guys to do. Yes, sir. Um, I remember in the, the, the history of the Yeah. Yes. Well, so have, you ever, have your parents ever been like, oh, you're so cute, oh, you're so cute, I want to eat you up? Yeah? Okay, well, just don't let them actually try, right? Because if they get one little bite of you, they're going to be like, oh, it's good. And then it's all over from there, okay? <laughs> However you take a bite, you know how you take a bite, right? <laughs> it's very good, I agree with you. Yes? Who's my favorite character? It's hard to choose between all of the characters because I really, I, I created them and so I love them all. But probably my favorite character to write, at least in A Tale Dark and was the devil. Yeah. Can I do my impression of the devil for you? This is my impression of the devil. So do you remember when, uh, when Hansel's gonna get, uh, is gonna have to go to hell and the devil yeah. comes to collect him, right? Yep. And Hansel sort of works up his courage and says, what will happen to me in hell? Remember that? And the devil says, I love it when they ask that. You will be damned to excruciating pain for all eternity. No matter what you do, no matter how good you are, but how many times you say, please, pretty please, with a cherry on top, I will never, ever, ever let you out. It is excruciating pain from the moment you arrive to the moment after eternity. That's the devil. And then when he's like talking to his grandmother later, he's like, oh, grandma, what a beautiful voice you have. I think this is really fun, right? Yes, sir. Why did she? Because she wanted to eat them. And they taste better when they're baked. I mean, you could roast them, you could pan fry them, you could saute them, toaster oven probably, but baking is probably the best way to eat chocolate. Yes? Um, uh, why do you have to get the three golden hairs to get out of hell? 
right? Why did you get the three old days you didn't help? So the thing is with fairy tales, and you guys keep having these great questions, is they don't always make 100% sense. <laughs> One of the cool things about fairy tales is you have a story that's very simple, right? Like a boy needs to go to hell and get out again. Or a girl needs to rescue her brothers from a mountain. And it's very simply told, but there are always a few details that are just really weird. Like, to open the mountain, she needs a chicken bone. And you're like, what? But it just, the story's just like, of course, she needs a chicken bone, so what? Or, to get out of hell, you need three golden hairs for the devil. Obviously, right? And so one of the cool things about fairy tales is they're just sort of, they have these like random details that they never explain, and it makes it feel more magical, more, more surprising. Um, I would love to take as many questions as we have. I don't want to run us out of time. Are we okay? I don't want to... I mean, we can leave at 12.15. Is that right? So we're okay. I'm yeah. fine. Yeah, okay. we're about 40 minutes in, so maybe a few okay. more. Okay, great. We'll take as many more as we can. Yes, sir. Yeah, so why do you kill a warlock by cooking him in a boiling cauldron with boiling oil and poison snakes? Because the boiling oil will probably kill him, and the poison snakes will probably kill him. So you put them both together, he's definitely dead. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, have you asked a question yet? Okay. Question. I love being an author. I'm glad you asked that question. Being an author is one of the best jobs I can ever imagine. Because this is what my life is like. I wake up in the morning. I did this this morning, for example. I didn't have all morning to do it, but I wake, I wake up in the morning. I put on my slippers. My slippers are very important for writing. Um, I make myself some toast and some tea. I sit down at my computer and I write for an hour, two hours, maybe three hours if it's a good day. And then I go and I lie on the couch and I stare at the ceiling, like I said, right? My wife goes to work. My wife comes back from work eight hours later. And I'm still lying on the couch with my slippers <laughs> and staring at the ceiling. And she goes, have you done any work today at all? And I go, shh. I'm working right now. <laughs> so if your idea of a good job is lying on the couch with slippers on and staring at the ceiling, I highly recommend you go to the right. <laughs> yes? Um, why did Gretel um, cut off her finger to open the door instead of sticking it in there and turning it open? Yeah. That's I have no idea. Um, I mean, it might be because she needed a chicken bone to open it, right? And with the finger, the bone isn't exposed or something. So maybe she needed the bone. But I, I really, again, this is one of these like random fairy tale things, right? Okay, if you have not asked a question, raise your hand. Otherwise, put your hand down. If you have not asked a question yet, yes? What did the prince die when he married the Say it again. What did the prince die when he married the Golden Princess. Um, because faithful Johannes saved them, right? Faithful Johannes killed the horse. Faithful Johannes threw the dress into the fire, right? So faithful Johannes, they were going to die. But faithfully, Johannes saved him and ended up sacrificing his life for them, right? By getting turned into the stone, right? That's right. right. Gross, right? Yes, sir. Uh, why do why when they go like Hansel and Gretel's head, they get cut off? Yeah. Do they just like rebuild them back again? No, they put them back on. So the, the <laughs> Johannes picks them up and puts them back on, and they yeah they regrow back together. But, like I said over there, don't try that at home. It doesn't actually work for you, usually, okay? Okay, yeah. Did you, like, your childhood, or did you, like, start That's a great question. Did I like reading and writing? So, as I said before, I did not like writing as a kid. I mean, it was fine, but I didn't do it for fun ever. And if you already are doing it for fun, then you're ahead of me. Then that's great. You're already on your way to being a writer. But I never did. I did like reading. My favorite books were... Um, have you ever read uh, any books by Roald Dahl? Yes! But he was my favorite author by far. Matilda's probably my favorite book ever. Um, BFG is amazing. Tron and the Child Factory. I adore all of his books. Um, the Witch is terrifying, so creepy. Um, I also love Tintin books. I don't know if you guys have ever read Tintin, but if you haven't, you should totally check them out. They're, these, they're comic books, but with lots of writing in them, and they're so good. I read The Hardy Boys, I read Encyclopedia Brown. Um, when I got older, I read Harry Potter and stuff, but that one only came out when I was when I was a little bit older. So yeah, I, I, I did love reading, actually. Uh, yes. Why did they cancel Little's father the dragon? Yeah. Um, because you know, in the beginning of the book, he cuts off their heads, right? And I think it's the best way to end the book. I had a lot of different endings. I wrote that ending a lot of times because as a writer, you do a lot of revision. I'll tell you about that in a second. 
But so in this case, I thought, if it started with him cutting off their heads, maybe the right ending would be them cutting off his, right? But how were they going to get to do that? And I knew I wanted there to be a dragon, because I wanted there to be an awesome dragon battle. And then I was like, what if he was the dragon? So that's how I came up with that idea. When I came up with that idea, I was really excited. Hands down, because I want to tell you about the revision. Do you guys ever have to revise when you write something? Do you have to go back and fix it, make changes? So as a writer, I have to do that a lot. So this book, In a Glass Grimly, I revised lots and lots of times. Who can guess how many times I revised this book? How many revisions do you think I did? 18? 18 is an excellent guess. It's a little bit higher than 18. But it's a very good guess. 20? Excellent. A little bit higher. 1 million. That's true. <laughs> yeah. 22? A little bit higher. 24? More? 26? More? 28? More? 30? Good guess. A little bit higher. 32? A little bit higher. 56? More. 100? Realistically? Is it a realistic guess? It's too low. More than 100. 200 is an excellent guess, and you're getting very close now. 200 is very, very close. A little bit higher. Higher. More. 250 is incredibly close. Now you're incredibly close. 250 is very close. Oh, 270, so close. You went a little bit too high, but like a little bit too high. Yeah. 268. Oh, so, so close. A little bit lower. So close. 267. You got 267. Great guess. So. I have done. 218 was not as close as I said it was, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I did do 267 draft of this book. Now, that does not mean I rewrote every word of the book 267 times, because I would be a thousand years old, right? What I did, though, was um, every time, so I read these books on my computer, and um, every time I want to do a major change for the book, every time I want to change a character, I want to change an ending, I want to rewrite a chapter, um, I want to like go through and sort of tighten up all the language, make it move faster. I save a new version on my computer. And there is currently on my computer 267 versions of In a Glass Grimoire. So yeah, so you do you do a lot of revisions. And maybe you're thinking now like, oh, that actually doesn't sound very fun. Maybe I don't want to be a writer after all. But you have to remember that most of the time during my day, I'm lying on the couch with my slippers on stairs. So it's really not that bad. Okay, we're gonna take like two more questions and we gotta call it. Yes. Yes, why does the moon try to eat children? Um, because children are delicious. No, we're not. Yes. Yeah. Is him being the dragon the curse? Part of the curse. I think I think probably. And what happens to the children is definitely part of the curse. And him turning into the dragon was part of what happened to the children, right? Yeah, I don't know if you caught this, but maybe in the third to last chapter, there's a line about um, the dragon spirit can take over you if you're like feeling despair. So when he was wandering looking for his kids, he was feeling despair, right? Which is how the dragon spirit got in here. So yeah, probably it is part of the curse. Good thinking. Very good thinking. Okay, let's take one last question. Yeah. Yeah, so that second graders, exactly. I would say stuff like, are there any little kids here? And they'd all be like, no. Okay. All right, you guys have been such a good audience.